Welcome to our summer video of 2021. Mike Van Bokel and myself will go over several issues dealing both with the hall and what's going on in the implant. I will first, like, I will first speak on uh, the hall issues, what's going on with the COVID restrictions, as well as I'm going to go into detail with the new sub agreement or settlement that we got from the company on the sub. And Mike will go into a little bit of detail, I think, with some of the grievances that are still going to be out there dealing with sub. The business of the hall seems to be picking up a little bit with the stage one, um, and we have people coming in out of the hall now. Fortunately, we were able to open up our bar last Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we're doing that again yesterday, today, and Saturday, and we're also going to do it on July 1st. It was great to see a lot of retirees show up. A lot of members come down, had a beer. We actually had some, a group down yesterday. One of the gentlemen out of Stampin was uh, retiring and a bunch of the co-workers come down and had a beer. We're open from three to seven, so people are coming down, two to seven, sorry. People are coming down, have a beer or two, and then go home. I just kind of think it was a, a kind of a, a release, get out, patios are open. I'll give credit to Linda Layton. She came up with the idea at first. I was kind of, I'm not a real proponent of the bar, but it's something, it was a form that our members, I think, really enjoyed, and hopefully it will continue for a few more days. We continue to do Zoom meetings. We've done uh, three executive meetings by Zoom to keep the business of the hall going, and we've had one general membership meeting. Our next one is this Sunday. If you're interested, go on and register. We'll have another general membership meeting. They're a little different, kind of choppy, but the communication, not choppy, just choppy by presentation by me. And uh, it's, it's difficult to kind of do the vote and keep talking and stuff like that. But it, it, last meeting went very well, had a lot of compliments on it. I will say, hopefully, if we get the numbers, uh, we get through stage three and that, hopefully we can do the in-person, go back to the in-person meetings as well in August. But I think we're going to stage three somewhere near the end of July. So uh, we'll revisit that as we go forward. <clears throat> Another area uh, that's going on is the elections. Our triennial elections are going to take place August 30th and 31st, and that will be done electronically, whether we're working in the plant or not. Notice of election will go up July 30th. Notice of nominations, I believe it's a, a two weeks right after that, and then the election August 30th, 31st, and when there's provisions with uh, runoff dates after that as well. The election committee will be meeting with me, Mike, and Brett Tree after this, uh, well, yeah, after this video and we're just going to go over some of the fine uh, kind of fine tune some of the dates times and make sure everything's on board uh, I believe the communication committee has been in uh, conversation and has everything in place to go we'll see at one o'clock how it goes um, but it will be different you'll be able to vote from your computer from your phone and uh, hopefully everything goes well one other issue we have, we do have another unit within our local AWC that the car carriers out back who take our cars, put them on the rail cars and put them into the yards and on the trucks out back. Their contract is up August 29th, so we'll be in uh, preparing for that in the late July, early August, and then negotiations will be uh, two, a week or two in August to get a collective agreement. Like I said, their contract expires August 29th, 2021. I've been, work, been working with Brett Tree for the last two weeks doing a transition. I am retiring July 1st. So according to our bylaws, uh, Brett, as vice president, does take over the role of president, and then the, the position will be up for election on August 30th, 31st. Um, we're kind of go, going through a lot of the stuff that I have outstanding, like AWC and some other stuff. A little bit of housekeeping as far as uh, shredding, getting rid of old files. I'm sending a lot of the benefit stuff that I would have been dealing with back to the benefits office um, in the implant. But that's been going over very well. The last subject I want to talk about, and it's not about the hall, this is more or less the sub agreement or su settlement that we had discussed several videos now. And we do have a sub agreement, but I want to go over in detail on how it actually works. Um, I'll start off by explaining our existing language. It needs to change drastically coming up with the Detroit 3 bargaining. That's where I'll have to change. Uh, they are both national and the other 
the other plants are aware that changes need to be made um, to avoid any complications like this again going forward. But the way it, it was working before we come up to this agreement was we, most people, and we're talking most of the 213 hires, I'll go into some of the 2000, uh, ones hired before 213 in my presentation. But the 213 hires, they were entitled to 13 weeks at 65% and 13 weeks at 50. This was more, uh, I believe, kind of an afterthought when it was negotiated, uh, I'm gonna say now 12 years ago, 13 years ago, and when it was decided, when it was negotiated, it was more for a permanent layoff. So you would ride 13 weeks at 65 and 13 at 50. It wasn't meant to have reoccurring layoffs off and on, off and on, off and on. What has happened is GM has administered this plan that they were making individuals ride the 13 weeks at 65% and exhaust the 13 weeks at 50% before replenishing, and then you had to be back in the plant before they would replenish. So we had a lot of members who were collecting maybe $17, $12 sub for 13 weeks, and then some weren't collecting any because they couldn't get replenished because they weren't back in the plant. The agreement that we have now, I say agreement, it's more of a settlement that we come up with is individual, we have a group of individuals who collect 13 weeks at 65 and 13 at 50%. Then we have a group at 26, at 65%, 26 weeks, and then 26 weeks at 50%. If someone is permanently laid off, that's what you will get and you'll continue. I'm not saying it's good by any means. It's a shitty program. We've tried to do the best we can with what we have, but again, it's gonna have to be something that's gonna be negotiated to improve. I like to see somewhere down the road, we have three different classifications, which I think is a crock of shit. Sorry for swearing. But basically, it's brutal. It, we all need to be one category where basically when you call up for sub and the benefit guy's answers, he's answering the same answer for everybody. This uh, stagger, we have three different groups right now. It's confusing for the company, payroll, and especially for the reps, but I mean especially for the individuals where they fall into line. With the temporary layoff, what we have done, we hope to make improvements is with every new layoff, so if we have a reoccurring layoffs, with every new layoff, it's you're starting a new claim. So you get laid off, well, just for simple date-wise, January 1st, 2020, you get laid off, and then you come back to work on March 1st, and then you're laid off in a couple weeks, you start a new claim, but you go back 52 weeks, and that is the language with all sub plans. You go back 52 weeks, and you minus the weeks that you collected. So if you had 13 and 13, and you collected five weeks, say, you would subtract five, and you'd still have 21, and you're gonna be paid 21, 21 uh, weeks at 65%. What's good about it is every week you work, you're replenishing those weeks, and the back end weeks will drop off. So I can't stress enough, once we get back to work, a lot of people are hopefully are working as much as they can because we, we do foresee that there is going to be some shutdown period, whether it's March, April, whatever time frame it is. But it's going to the time frame, you know, I'm hearing a lot. First thing I heard was 16 weeks for the retooling. So that's a very aggressive retooling, getting everything back up. But hopefully it's 16 weeks. So if we go fast forward to April 2022, you're going to go back 52 weeks. If you're laid off April 1st, you're going to go back 52 weeks. And if you have 26 weeks, they're going to minus whatever weeks you have in that period. So we're laid off a lot in April and May. So we, you have to hope that, you know, the more you work, the more will drop off the back end. So a lot of people, even when we get there, aren't going to have a full 26 weeks because they're going to have weeks of entitlement taken off. So, but the strong... The strong thing with the, what the agreement says is every time you get laid off, you're getting paid at 65%. There'll be no more 50% payout, only if you're permanently laid off. So we think that was a good thing, and we also believe that when you have a new layoff, everything starts over. So we're really hoping that will get us over the hump, and then once we're working, um, but like I said, it has to be renegotiated up uh, upcoming negotiations. Are we on tape? Yes, we are. Oh, yeah? Oh, okay. Congratulations on your retirement, Joe Graves. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Thanks, Sandra. You talk. Am You've I? talked so much about cake on your videos for the last year and a half that we figured it was really appropriate to give you a cake on your very last video. <laughs> I and talked I, about I, cake? I think I speak for everyone when I say how much our members appreciate the service you've given us um, during your 32 years here. And thank you very much, and we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Just one disappointment with the cake. It would have been nice if it was shaped as a Montreal Canadian emblem. But thank you so much, guys. Thank you. And thank you to the membership for electing me and uh, allowing me to be, be the representative over the years. Okay, back to business. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. With the settlement, we have two outstanding issues. One is the EMD workers, plus we have three from Oshawa, who have been affected by this. They got hired prior to 2.13, so they fall under the five to 10 category. So they have 26 weeks at 65% and 26 weeks at 50%. They should never have fall under this. There was an agreement. I was part of that agreement back in 2012. I sat in a room with Bob Scott, I think Lois Gothel, uh, Ken Os uh, Keith Osborne, and the company lawyers, and it, it was clearly structured in an agreement. It says they get corporate seniority for vacation and benefits entitlement. So as we're going through the weeks of entitlement, uh, weeks of sub, we got over 26 weeks. We got to a period where EMD workers are being reduced down to 50%. The benefits office and myself were getting calls. We, we were not told that they were going to administer it this way. They never gave us a heads up that they are going to do it this way, which I think it was fairly unprofessional of the company to just go ahead and do it and not even think that we were going to hear about it. But the settlement basically, it's, it's a pref hire language. They had the pref hire language, and basically they come to our plant. They come with plant seniority for job postings, but they have corporate seniority, company seniority for vacation and benefits entitlement. The sub-language falls under benefits. It falls under the benefit supplemental book. And basically, we will be going forward to make arguments that they were done wrong and they should be paid like a 25, 26-year employee. They should have 104 weeks of sub, and we're asking for restoration for the weeks that they were reduced. I'm, I'm more than confident that we'll be successful going forward with this grievance. The other grievance is we have language in our language that talks about if there's changes to government programs that we will maintain a 65 percent level with the CERB program a lot of our members were paid 500 dollars and that's all they were paid um, i won't go into all the details of the grievance but basically we were told uh, several times that we will be topped up the 73 dollars to make make us whole to the 65 percent sub that we negotiated and that's been the levels that our members thought they were going to get um, yes the government changed the process and they kind of put us through a different stream but the company's still responsible to maintain that we have 65 percent so that's another grievance that will be going forward i would assume mike's going to talk a little bit about those two issues as well but uh again you know, of course, I take the position, I feel more confident that we're going to go, we'll win both those grievances. And now I'll turn it over to Mike. Okay, hello. Uh, my name is Mike Van Bolko, the plant chair. Uh, welcome to the second part of our June video. Um, you're probably wondering why I got a Montreal shirt on. Keith uh, Ackworth actually called me before the Toronto-Montreal series and asked me if I wanted to make a bet. He said if Toronto wins, that I'd have to wear a Toronto Maple Leaf shirt, and if Montreal wins, I got to wear a Montreal shirt. So I didn't think it was much of a bet. I was only disappointed that it took seven games, but sometimes when the price is right, you just have to make the bet. Um, I'll start off with production. I just want to be clear, there's a bit of confusion on the floor, uh, but next week we are running an 8-hour and a 10-hour shifts, so 7 to 3 and then 3 to 1. Uh, they expect the overtime likely to be cancelled after the Monday, so we'll probably run 10 hours Monday. The rest of the week is only looking like it's 8 hours, but that will depend on how we run uh, during the week, and if we have good days, there probably won't be overtime. And I also think Thursday afternoons you can probably expect a short day. Um, it is a four-day week next week, so happy Canada Day to everybody. We will be celebrating or recognizing Canada Day on Friday in the plant. 
Um, then we have a two-week layoff uh, in July, and right now we are expected back August 2nd. That will be confirmed or extended at some point in July. Um, I would not make any plans. We had some issues with people booking cottages in June when we got called back. If you really need the time off, keep your vacation in there. And if you're currently laid off, don't book cottages because we could be back to work in August. It is GM's plan to work in August, uh, but a lot depends on parts, which I'll get to later and with COVID. Um, we did not have a lot of the students come back. We had a lot come back, but we, did, we had a lot that didn't come back. Um, they have to find money, I get that, they need jobs. So we are really short a lot of people. There are a lot of people, like a lot of people out there who are currently on the three month layoff who got called back to work for next week. So there's, just, there's not a few of you, there's a lot of you because we don't have the students. And we did have probably half a dozen people quit um, just because of the job market and job security, which I'll get to. Um, for next week, the company's plan right now is to build out of the 2021 Equinox model. They then want to build 150 2022s and ship them out the door. So the goal is to build 150, get them shipped, and then leave assembly full all the way back. So you're going to build three or 400 Equinoxes. Uh, paint and welding won't be as full. They don't want to leave anything with sealer laying around that's not gone through the ovens. So a weld shop might uh, very well be empty. Um, just in case uh, we're not back in August. Uh, postings, a lot of postings went up yesterday. Take a good look at the posting board if you're interested. There's a lot of good jobs. All the people that have retired, uh, if their jobs weren't up before February, are now up, including the ones that are retiring July 1st. Um, we will be talking to the company, and we think we'll win our arguments that everybody will have posting rights for the new uh, electric truck, so feel free to post now. And if the electric truck comes up in six or eight months, you'll be able to post again. I'm not telling everybody that all the jobs are going up plant-wide. We do not have the floor plan of the plant yet of what it's going to look like. We've seen it. It's going to change. It keeps changing. But at some point, we'll get it down. I don't expect the postings to come up this year, but I do expect them up probably in January, February. But there'll be lots of time and a lot of questions to answer before that time. Um, for the EMD, what Joe touched on, for the EMD members and the three people, that, the trades that prefired from Oshawa, we do have a grievance in the system. We are waiting for a step three response that we thought was coming last week. We will get the step four done real quick. Even during shutdown, we'll work on it and get it done. We need to get to arbitration to try and get the EMD uh, case settled on your past weeks. You guys should be at 104 weeks of sub. I know uh, the people in Detroit don't get it, but I, we think it's black and white. We think it's a it should be a strong case for us to take to arbitration. And unfortunately, arbitration is just, uh, unfortunately, when the two parties can't get together and make a decision. But it's just too much money involved right now. Uh, we got to get that case settled. Um, Mass. Ontario is slowly opening. I am getting a couple phone calls, and I'm reading about myself on Facebook a little bit. I do not support the mass um, when we're free not to have to wear them. But right now, we have to wear the mask, so I do fully support it. There's going to be three main groups deciding the mask. The first one will be the governments, both federal and provincial. They are going to have first say when we don't have to wear the mask. GM head office is then going to dictate to us when we're allowed to take the mask off. And finally, uh, and when saying that, I do expect the U.S. to go before us. There are some states already out there with no mask requirements. Uh, the state of Texas, just so you know, has no requirement to wear masks anymore, yet they have a GM plant in Texas that are still mandating the mask. And then finally, the third group is going to be our own internal joint health and safety committee, which is 50% unionized, 50% company. Um, when all those three people or groups tell us that we don't have to wear a mask, then the mask will come off. About 15 months ago, uh, Chris Wilson and I started meeting with GM about safety protocols going forward about COVID. I'm certainly not a specialist, either was Chris Wilson. And to be honest, nobody from the GM side was jumping up and down saying they were specialists. Um, but we, came, we got together, we made some protocols, and I want to thank everybody in our plant, both hourly and salary, for what you've done over the past 15 months. Um, part of our job is to debate, argue, and sometimes we start yelling at GM for various reasons. But our record for the past 15 years is something to be very proud of. Toyota's 10 minutes down the 401. They have had numerous breakouts. Uh, they've had the whole plant go home on more than one occasion. Many businesses in Oxford County have been closed due to COVID. Uh, for the past 15 months, whatever we have done, we're doing it right. We have not had a major breakout. We've kept a good control on it. Maybe it's luck, but I'd like to think a lot of it is our safety culture, which is on, on everyone's shoulder in our plant. I think we did it right, and I think our record shows that. So we're going to keep doing it right. We're not in a race here. I'll tell you right now, we're not going to be the first plant or the first business in Oxford County to lose the mass. 
But when the time comes and those three groups tell us we get to take the masks off, it will be a very good day. Um, uh, I personally hate them. I want to get rid of them forever. But your safety is our overriding factor. We want you to come, go home safe every day, and you're going to go home to your partner and your kids, and you're not going to bring something home from the plant. So that's our overriding factor in all this. It's been 15 months. Hopefully, it'll be sometime this year. We'll see. Uh, the only other thing I want to say on the mask, we finally had our first trial this week for the deaf members. Uh, we brought clear masks in. It has been a very big struggle to find a clear mask that actually passes all the safety guidelines. We brought them in. They were disappointing. It's a very small mask. You can't see the people's mouths real good. Uh, they didn't make the grade, so we are not using them anymore. The next step we're going to try, instead of trying to find another mask, which we still will try to do, but they're going, the company's going to go and give phones to all the deaf members out there, the team leaders, the area leaders, so they can start communicating, uh, become more inclusive, and hopefully that will work with the masks. Okay, uh, July 1st is coming up, Canada Day. It's going to mark another month of people retiring. At least these people got to come in for three weeks, say their proper goodbyes, but 22 more people will join our retirement ranks. Of these 22, there is someone I want to mention. Uh, inmate 1103 is Joe Graves, our president. Um, Joe's been a rep for over 30 years, first as a committee person, then as most of you have dealt with him as a benefit rep, and then finally as our president. Um, I personally have been elected for 26 years now, and I can tell you Joe has been a true leader for our local. Uh, from last year in August until Joe, this, uh, until Joe or till January this year, uh, Joe and I were doing big three bargaining and then had a little bit of a breather, but not much, and then we started on the cami bargaining. I spent a lot more days and nights with Joe than I did my own wife. Um, I know him extremely well, and I'm, I'm just telling you that uh, he's, he's a great man of integrity. He'll do anything for our members. Um, he's going to be missed. He's a fountain of knowledge, and he's an expert in all areas of benefits and pensions. Um, Joe and Dan Borthwick uh, formed a very formidable pair. For those of you who don't know, and I think almost everybody does, Joe is fighting, or Dan is fighting cancer right now, and he's in a big battle, so we wish Dan all the best. But Joe and Dan together made quite a formidable pair, much like uh, Laverne and Shirley, uh, Thelma and Louise, Lenny and Squiggy, or uh, for the younger people, maybe Pinky and the Brain. Um, Dan and Joe cared more for this membership than most people will ever know. It doesn't matter if you're a 30-year person or just six months uh, started. Uh, I've seen them in some major arguments with this company with a lot of passion, and uh, I know a lot of people don't realize how much passion they go into it. But Joe once told me when I first uh, started a long, long time ago that we don't have 2,000 members. We have 2,000 families to look after. We have their partners. We have their children. And he taught me a lot about being a union rep, and he said, if you really want to get into it, the day doesn't end at 7 to 3 or 11 to, 11 to or 3 to 11, whatever. It's 24 hours a day, and he couldn't be more right. And just the final thing about Joe, I just want to say to his wife, Julie, uh, thanks for sharing your husband for the past 32 years. My wife knows what it's like. Uh, just because you go home doesn't mean the phone shuts off. So just, you know, Julie, Joe's made a huge difference in a lot of people's lives, and he's going to be missed. Uh, the final thing I want to talk about is the future. I'm getting a lot of phone calls, a lot of texts and emails, more from our junior members, and I truly understand why. Um, I understand a lot of people are getting very stressed, and they're also hurting for money. Um, I've been to enough meetings to know that GM wants to run every day. They really do. They're obviously paying us sub to stay home. Their profits are going down. It's not my biggest fear, but if the company's making money, we always get more money at some point. So uh, that's another shot at, part, at profit sharing that we should be in. However, um, they do want to run. We want them to run. I don't know if we're going to be running in August. We are having all kinds of issues, as you'll see next week. We're already out of seats. We're going to be out of a couple thousand seats by the sounds of it. Um, we have a lot of parts that come from around the world, from all four corners of the world. Um, I'm not saying geography was my best subject, but I was in a meeting once about a year ago, and we actually ran out of a part from Transylvania. And I was sitting in a meeting and I actually Googled it because I thought Transylvania was a bit of a myth with Dracula, but it actually does exist. And we actually get a little part out of Transylvania, but the courier companies refuse to move product out of Transylvania for a short period. So we do have parts coming from all around the world. Um, we are clearing up at Canada and in Ontario, which is great news with COVID, but there are some countries out there that are hurting. And we've got a lot of Tier 2, Tier 3, Tier 4 suppliers. I'm really hoping GM and other people have learned from the, the microchip issue that uh, you've got to start building more parts in uh, North America, specifically Canada, and how about Offshore County? But there's a lot of people in here who work great that can build a lot of your parts that you need. 
Um, but for the junior people, we need to get you in a better position. Uh, we thought we made a very good deal on the sub, so you'll be able to get 65% pay. Um, if the company comes out ever with an announcement and we do shut down next year at some time, we'll put memos out. But a lot of people got to put a week of vacation into the down weeks. If we're down in April, May or June or February, March, April, you got to put a week of vacation in there. It's for your own benefit. We'll explain it. There'll be lots of time to do it, but we'll explain it. Maybe the shutdown doesn't come till the second half of next year. But if you get your vacation in there, it kickstarts your claim again and you kick back up if you lose 13 weeks because we've lost a lot of time in the spring. So you can, you can get your weeks back and get back up to that 65%. You're not blowing a week of vacation. You're re-kicking, you're kicking your uh, claim back in. Um, our future is strong. I want to tell people that their postings went up. There's another posting on the board, again, for the electrical component of the new launch team. There's just that much work. Um, I will be going down, I hope, in July, maybe August, but I'm going to go to Detroit, take a look uh, at the Bright Drop, and I've asked them to bring one of the first trucks that they build back to the plant so people can walk by it, actually feel it, and touch it. Um, but we've got to get people back to work. That's the big thing. I don't know if there's going to be three months rotating layoff again, but if there is, try and stay at work, especially the junior people. You've got to get your weeks back in there. Um, we're not going anywhere. Our company's not going anywhere. The Bright Drop program is coming. Orders are real. Um, there are actually commercials out there. If you want to look at a Willie Nelson commercial with a bright job, I think it's about a 15-second ad. They're trying to drum up some excitement for it, but there's some big companies that are already in there and signing contracts with us. Um, but just trying to stay calm and keep everybody on an even keel. Um, I really wish GM would become more transparent in some areas. We've really been pushing them to try and get out on the bright drop, let us know what the long-term plans are. Hopefully it's coming, and hopefully before shutdown. I don't know if it will, but hopefully there'll be a message from GM next week I don't know if it will be or not, about what the next year looks like or the next 18 months look like so you can get some relief. You don't have to go out there looking for jobs and realize that, hey, um, the next 12 months might be a bit bumpy because of COVID and everything else, but there is a, there's a bright light at the end and it's bright drop and it's coming. Um, but that's it on my behalf. Uh, just want to say from our implant, stay safe, everyone. Enjoy your summer shutdowns uh, and any, any extra time off and hopefully we'll see everybody back here in August. In closing, I'd like to just thank uh, Locally membership for all the years uh, for the support that they've given me. Uh, I've worked now close to 33 years, and I'm not going to go through every name and thank you everyone. There could be another half hour to this video. I will put out something on the web page. I've written a, my last statement kind of thanking a lot of people who played an important role for me uh, while I've been here at Cami. What I do want to do is kind of dispel the rumor that I've never worked on the line. I've worked very hard on the line. I like to dispel that rumor that I haven't worked on the line for those 33 years. One thing too, I've been very fortunate. I've never been laid off on all the years of layoff. I've never worked layoff. And another thing is I think I've worked maybe a couple months afternoon. So I've, ha I've been very privileged, very lucky to both represent the members of Local 8, but as well the route I took. I did take it, I think originally, and I'll explain it in my letter, how I got involved with the union. This today is just to kind of thank everybody, and I am, and from the deep, uh, from the from my heart, I just like to thank you. It's been a privilege and honor to serve the membership of Local 88 and all the elections we've gone through, all the tribulations, all the contracts. I want to thank you, uh, thank everyone for the th uh, for the 33 years, and hopefully the plant continues for another 33 years. So in the end, I like to say goodbye, tension, hello, pension. Thank you so much. In solidarity, Joe Graves. Hi, I just wanted to give a personal message to Joe Graves on his retirement. Joe, it's been a real pleasure working with you during your last term over the three last three years. Um, I've learned a lot from working with you, and I really appreciate your leadership style. You're very laid back, you're very open-minded, and we always have great discussions. You're never afraid to share information, and I really do appreciate that. We've gone through our challenges here at the Union Hall over the last three years, not the least of which being actually building this brand new addition onto our Union Hall. That was a huge project, and we, we learned a lot together doing that. Uh, then, of course, there's been the last year and a half with COVID, which has presented its own challenges. 
Um, anyways, I just want to wish you all the best on your retirement. It has been a pleasure working with you, and I wish you nothing but happy days ahead. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, usually we're behind the camera. Um, we're the Local 88 Communications Committee. I'm Alan Fisher. I run the website and also edit all these videos that you're watching. We just wanted to take a quick minute, since we're running the show here now, that um, we wanted to say thanks, Joe. Um, you've really supported us in everything we've been doing, the electronic elections, the videos, everything we do. And we just want to say thank you. Um, we're all going to say something very short here. And we've got Linda Layton and Doris Weir and Keith Ackworth. And I'm going to pass it on to Linda now. Hi everyone, I'm Linda Layton, Financial Secretary. Um, I've been part of the Communications Committee for, gosh, I can't even remember how long, I think <laughs> since around 2007. <clears throat> and uh, these days I help these folks with uh, a lot of the editing behind the scenes, some transcription as well, and just doing what I can from an executive board perspective to uh, get things going so that they can do the really, really important work that they do, getting communications out to you. And I just want to say to Joe, who is retiring soon, um, thank you very much for all you've done for the communications committee. I believe you've really helped build a bridge between uh, the standing committees, the executive and the implant, and uh, you've I believe made relationships quite a bit smoother. So thank you very much for doing all of that. Um, your leadership has been greatly appreciated. Thank you. Hi, my name is Doris Weir. I'm a trustee um, on the executive for Local 88. I also am the photographer and uh, newsletter editor. Um, I for for the communications committee. I just want to quickly say thank you very much Joe for all that you've done for us Appreciate all your support and have a great um, a, a Retirement I know you'll be around but yeah have a great retirement uh, I'm Keith Ackworth. I um, been a part of the communications committee since 2017 uh, my primary role is um, helping Alan uh, accomplish the tasks that we set out to do. Um, I'm more of the social media guy. Um, I also do the sound editing for these videos as well as our podcast and stuff. So we all kind of have our own little niche here and then we work really well together. Um, I just want to take this time too to thank Joe. Um, without his leadership and his compromising and his ability um, to, to work well with others, um, our committee would not be as, as um, successful as it is in as terms of getting information out. So I really appreciate that. Um, Joe has done a really good job at making us feel um, a part of um, leadership and as, as well as um, making us feel important in our role. So I just want to wish Joe the best of luck in his future and, uh, and we expect that these videos will continue. So um, thank you, Joe, and best of luck um, with whatever you decide to do after you leave Kim. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Thanks Joe. Joe. Cut.